All right, welcome to the podcast today. I'm doing a live podcast for you, uh, my viewers and subscribers on YouTube. This is like a, another first for me to do this. And uh, as I'm setting up, I probably should have set up before I, I did this. Uh, I'll explain to you, kind of giving you a little behind the scenes look on how I produce my podcast. So my podcast is my main content hub. It's where I create my main content. I'm very focused on building that platform. And of course, you listen to those on iTunes, on Stitcher. That's ideally where people are going to consume that content. Uh, but also, it's embedded in my blog. So if you go over to my blog, you will you can listen to the content there. YouTube is just another channel. Now, people can discover me on YouTube. I can embed this YouTube video into the blog. So now there's audio, video, and written content to support this one piece of content that I'm doing. A strategy that I've used over the years uh, quite a bit. All right, I'm going to fix the camera here because I'm looking at it and I can see it's crooked. So bear with me. Eh, not too bad. Um, I may edit that out. I may not. Me reaching at the camera with my big paws. Um, but I, I kind of wanted to give you you know, a behind the scenes, and I got myself mic'd here. Last week I did a live cast, by the way, and I kind of consider this a live cast because I'm not going to go and edit this video a great deal. I may chop the beginning and the end just to kind of make it a little more comfortable, but I'm not going to edit out things as they occur on the video. The way I do my podcast, I spend quite a bit of time, but I did want to give you kind of behind the scenes look of how the podcast is done. You can't see the equipment, but here I, I've got a, a you know, really nice quality microphone attached to my desk on a hydraulic thingy arm here. And uh, my board is right here. And there's another piece of equipment here. Maybe I'll show it to you at some point if you want to see it. I'll, I'll, I'll put pictures in the show notes or something. But um, another piece of equipment here that's going to be hooked up this weekend, as a matter of fact. And my recorder is right here. I'm going to record the podcast down into this. You can see it. And then my iPad here is for some sound effects that I have that I'll pipe in live on the show. So I'm just going to test right now, test the sound quality of that and make sure I've got... There it is. Looks good. Now I hit record once on here and I can actually see the, the sound, so the, the levels, so that I can test it. I'm going to do that. Testing, 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 and looks like we're good to go. Uh, really simple setup. So I wanted to show you again, you know, create this, number one, I want to create this as video content so you can see it. So it's going to be a little long video because it's a podcast. This video could be anywhere from, you know, 20 to 30 to 40 to an hour minutes. And, uh, you know, I, I would love for you to go over and check out the podcast, but if the video is the way you like to see it, just another way for people to consume content. So I recommend you, if you're watching this, you go out and create content, you know, in your central content hub. You know, if your, your main place is YouTube, find other ways to turn that, vid, that, that content, that good content that you're doing into other content. So last week, if you were watching, I did it with Meerkat and Periscope. I did it live. I had my equipment here. And I'll talk about that on the podcast. But um, this week, I'm kind of doing it live to stream to put it onto the YouTube. So I'm not streaming it, but technically I consider this live. So with that said, let's get started. I'm going to hit record and rock and roll. Nuclear Chowder Podcast, episode 87. All right, so just to explain what I'm doing here, a little bit, I record that one little bit and intro, and then I will edit in a pre-recorded music intro later, and then we're going to start the podcast now. I'm going to hit record again. And thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the Nuclear Chowder Podcast. Again, this is episode 87, and again, my name is Mike Brooks. Thanks for tuning in wherever you're listening, on Stitcher, iTunes, or over on NuclearChowder.com on the podcast channel there. And today, I'm actually recording this live on YouTube. Not live, but I'm, I'm going to put this on YouTube. So I'm recording a video as I'm recording this. As, as I'm recording the podcast, I'm recording a video. Same time. And I'm going to do this live. Normally, when I do my podcast, you know, I'll have starts, I'll have stops. 
and I edit those out later. But I'm really going to do this a little raw, a little live, so that I can put this content out there on YouTube as well. And the uh, topic I'm talking about today is how I get content for my business blog. So kind of answering a question that I get asked a lot, and that is how do I get content for my business blog, for my podcast, for my videos. So I'm going to talk about that today. And uh, again, you know, recording this for the YouTube audience as well. So we'll, we'll, have, uh, we'll have some fun with that today. And uh, I'll bring you up to speed on some stuff that's going on. And I'm actually, by the way, I'm doing something, and I've talked about this on the show before, and I know who's going to be laughing when I say this. Uh, Ralph M. Rivera, this is for you. I am recording not just one episode today. I'm recording two episodes. And if you're listening to this, when it comes out, it comes out every Tuesday morning at 8 o'clock. That's the schedule. That's the schedule I committed to a while ago. I don't always meet it because I get busy, and then I don't record this podcast, but I'm adjusting my business a bit so that I have more time to record this podcast. So I'm really committed to it. It's really important to me. And uh, I know Ralph is laughing right now because that's just the way Ralph is. But, and that's true. He does love me. And thank you, Ralph, for that. He, uh, he laughs at me because I'm not consistent with it. And I know he's going to mention me on his show. He always mentions me. He calls me delicious and something. Um, handsome and delicious. That's what he does. He has uh, he had Barack Obama come on his Web Search Social podcast, which is my favorite podcast to listen to, and I think you should listen to it too. But um, yeah, he is going to he is going to laugh at me because I'm not consistent. But I'm trying, so I'm recording two episodes at once. And by the way, Ralph is going to be here on Saturday this week. And well, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, I do appreciate that, Ralph. Thank you so much. Um, and I know Carolyn, his wife, his lovely and talented wife, Carolyn, or he, he calls Furiosa, um, loves when I edit those little clips of Ralph into my podcast. And of course, if you're listening on YouTube, you, you can't, um, you know, hear me doing that uh, because it's piped into the soundboard. Anyway, a little confusing. But Ralph's going to be here Saturday, this Saturday. And we're going to, maybe we'll record a, uh, Ralph and Carolyn are going to be here. Maybe we'll record a podcast live. He's coming to hook up my Multicom Pro XL. Like, I don't even know what this thing does, but it's a piece of equipment that's sitting here to my right. I'm pointing at it right now. It's above my mixer, and it's not hooked up yet. I know it, I believe it, inc I know, well, I know it increases the sound quality, but I don't technically know what it does. And he's going to hook it up for me. He told me to buy it, and I listened to everything Ralph tells me. Uh, and, and also, by the way, if you've been listening to his podcast, to their podcast, Ralph and Carolyn, you know that we have, he, he announced it last week, but we are forming a business partnership. So we're going to be talking a lot more, and we may do some crossover episodes. We may come up with a whole new podcast. I don't know what's going to go on, but they pitched me on a business idea that they had, and they asked me, and I'm very um, excited, and uh, what's the word I'm looking for? honored to be even asked to be their business partner. And uh, it's, it's really exciting because I've been doing this alone. I had a business partner years ago when I ran the martial arts school, but it's been since 2010. I mean, it's, it's a long time. I've been on my own, doing my own thing. And I really, I do miss having the synergy of other people. And, and me, Ralph, and Carolyn really have a great relationship. I love the way they run their business. They bring things to their business that I just don't bring. I don't bring them to my business. I don't have those skills that they have. And I'm excited to see what kind of synergy we can, we can all bring to the table. And I'm, I'm basically, my job is to market the business, I think. I mean, we're, we're still working it out, but uh, I trust in them. And I trust this is going to be a great project. I really don't know. Believe it or not, and I would coach people not to do this. I would coach people to, to never go into business the way I'm going into business here. I'm doing it based on our friendship, which is completely the wrong way to do it. However, I have a very good professional relationship with them. We've worked together before, so I know these are the people, and, and having had partners before, I understand how to do it a lot better, and I know they're going to bring the things in a partnership that I'm missing, and I'll bring some things that they're missing. But more importantly, they're going to do it. They're, we're going to enter into a partnership the right way, even though I don't yet know what the product even does. But I trust in their vision. 
and, and that's the important thing. So I'll bring you up to date more on that as we go. Maybe we'll talk to Ralph and Carolyn about it this weekend. But really today, what I want to talk about is this topic of how to get more content on, on the blog. It's a topic that I've, I've talked about it in the past, too. I mean, it's a recurring topic on this show, but really only because it's one of the easiest ways. This is one of the easiest ways to come up with content that I can think of. One of the most powerful ways to do. I mean, it's a winning strategy because content, this kind of content that, that I'm going to recommend you create is perfectly aligned with your prospect's needs. And when that happens, you're going to attract more prospects and convert them into customers. So drum roll. I wish I had a drum roll. Let's see. Let me go to my iPad here and uh, see what kind of things I have on my sound effects board to, uh, to use as a drum roll. How about this? Not quite a drum roll, but uh, not bad. So here's my method. Ready? Answer the questions that you already are being asked almost every day by your prospects, by people who are vying to become your customers. It's that easy. Uh, that's it. That's all there is to it. Answer the questions that you're being asked and that you're already answering. So few people do this that it really boggles my mind. Here's what most people do. And listen, I'm not pointing fingers here. I get caught up in the same trap. You know, I'm not perfect. I have to be disciplined not to do this stuff myself. But here's what most people do. They write about what they want their customer to know. So they're talking at their website visitor instead of having a conversation with their website visitor. Like, you know, creating a brochure. Now, when you talk at somebody... You're just another company trying to sell them something. When you have a conversation with somebody, you are becoming a really a trusted friend. You're engaging with them in a way that gets their attention or keeps their attention, gets their interest going. They're interested in what you have to say. You're having a conversation with them. You're not necessarily, and you may be educating them on your sales process, but they've asked a question. They're looking for the answer. Now you're answering it. You have a much better shot of getting many, many more customers than ever before if you do that. this. I mean, there's a magical thing about answering someone's questions. When you do it right, I mean, their guard comes down, and you're really allowing them to get to know you, and the real you, not the salesman you. And this doesn't mean that you're not selling in this process. It just means that you're really trying to answer their question first. You know, and people will have their BS detectors up. Like, if you're going to, you know, if you, if you answer their question with a very salesy, inauthentic narrative where you start talking at them again, they're, they're going to keep their guard up. So this allows you to get them to get their guard down. But you do have to be cautious of that. You have to make sure that you're just not talking. You, you, even though you're answering their question, you're not talking at them. You're not answering their question with what you, your best interest is. Sometimes you have to tell them, the, you know, the God's honest truth. Maybe they shouldn't buy from you in this circumstance. But that's honest, right? They're going to figure that out, that out anyway. People buy from those, and I've said this before, I'll say it again, people buy from those that they know, like, and trust. It's a thousand times easier to sell to a person when they know you, like you, and trust you. And there's many, many reasons for that psychology. I mean, number one, and it's very powerful, you have to be very ethical about this because when you build a relationship with people, when people get to know you and they really do like you and trust you, they will be very easy to persuade. They will be very easy to persuade. And you have to remember not to take advantage. I mean, you have to, you have to ethically, you can't take advantage of that, right? So if, I, if, if, if there's something that I sell but you don't need, you might buy it from me just because you know me, like me, and trust me, right? And I can talk you into that very, very easily. So you have to be very, very honest, open, and just ethical. You have to have higher standards. This is a form of persuasion here that we're talking about. When you start persuading people and you start getting people to the point where they'll do whatever you ask them to, almost hypnotically, you have a moral obligation to tread lightly I mean, I have to underline that. There's, there's, that's a serious thing. If you do all this stuff right, you are going to persuade more people to want to become your customers. 
you're going to have more power to bring in more customers. And it's not enough in business to just open the floodgates and, and you know, with your mouth watering, signing everybody up to your product, whether they want it, need it, or, or not. You have to make sure you're qualifying your prospect and you're answering the question for them. Do they need this? Because they're, they know you like you and trust you and they're very, very, they may be very prone to say, you know what, I'm just going to buy it because I know Mike and, and I trust in him. You know, kind of like that blind trust I'm going into my partnership with Ralph and Carolyn with, right? I mean, and that's why I'm going into their partnership. It really is. Because I know them, I like them, and I trust them. Pure and simple. I know them. I know that they, no matter what that end product is, and it's going to be software, by the way. It's software as a service. And I kind of have a broad scope of an idea of what this product's going to do, but I don't yet know if I can sell this, I don't know what it is. I, you know, I'm the marketing sales guy in this company, and I don't yet know what it is, so I don't know who the audience is necessarily. I have a broad-based idea. But I know them well enough, and I know the way they run their business, and I know the way they're going to run this business, and I trust them enough to blindly be led because they have that in me, right? And now if they're not ethical and, and they are not holding themselves to a higher moral standard to say, you know what, let, let me, I'm not trying to sell Mike on this. I'm not trying to trick him into something. They honestly believe that I'm meant to be in their business. They've done their due diligence to make sure they're doing right. They're going to do right by me in their shareholder agreement. They're going to do the right thing to lead me into this business. It's very, very important to remember that. When people know you, like you, and trust you, you have a big obligation. So, how do we do it? How do we do it? So the, the way to do this is to just pay close attention. And I'm circling back around to answering their questions. Pay close attention to what people are asking you. And, and some people are going to say, well, nobody ever asks me anything. No, that's wrong. You get asked the same questions over and over and over again. If someone asks you a question, what I want you to do is go to Staples or Office Max or wherever you like to shop for notebooks and get yourself a nice pretty notebook and write down on the front of that notebook questions I get asked by my prospects. Not, not your customers. Your customers are already your customers. I want you to write down prospect questions, questions that people are asking you on their way to becoming a customer. If they're already a client, that's fine if they're looking to become a new customer. Every time you get asked something, I want you to write it in the notebook, even if you've been asked that question before. Actually, especially if you've been asked that question before. Over time, you're going to see that people seem to ask the same questions about what you do. You're also going to build a phenomenal list of actual titles for your blog posts. I'll explain that in a moment, but you are going to see repetition in what they ask. They're frequently asked questions. I mean, like, how much does it cost to hire you is probably a question that you and I get asked all the time by almost everybody who wants to hire you. So I get asked all the time, a lot of time, a lot of times, how can I create content for my blog, right? And the question I actually get asked is how, I get, how do I get content for my business blog or for my website. And I'm answering that in this post. So I named the post, I named the name of the blog post, the title, the title of the blog post, the title of the podcast becomes the question that I'm asked. I took the question, I turned it into the title. Now my assumption here is that if my prospect asks me this and I write the blog post or the podcast, or whatever, to answer this, then someone may ask the same thing in Google, right? If someone's asking that question to my face, there's other people probably asking that question as well, but some of them are just asking it to Google because they don't know, they don't have someone in their networking group or wherever to ask. So they go to Google, they type in, how do I get more content for my blog? How do I create content for my blog? When you name something, when you name a title, when you name a blog post what that question is, if, it, if it's a direct match, you stand a better chance of being found for that when somebody types it into Google. It's good SEO practice. 
So I'm doing good by my search engine optimization, right? I'm getting found, I'm getting higher rankings in Google, but I'm also directly answering a question that my prospects are answer, asking me. So if you, as a prospect, go to Google and you type in that question, and my blog post comes up and it, you can see that the question matches the, the title of the blog post, you may be like, hmm, I might want to check that out. And then you see I'm not trying to sell you something, I'm just trying to educate you like I'm doing here. Hopefully you consider yourself educated. You are way more likely to end up liking me afterwards. Trusting me because you understand, you've gotten a feel for, does this guy know what he's talking about? And you're going to get to know me over time. That's where that know, like, and trust comes in. It, now, it's a process. Somebody may need to consume a bunch of your content in order to get there. That's why you want to have ample places where people can subscribe to your email list all over your website so that they can go and make that connection and say, you know what, this guy kind of does sound like he knows what he's talking about. Let me subscribe to his newsletter or let me get this ebook that answers this question or let me, you know, go on his Facebook page and like his Facebook page. Let me follow him on YouTube and see what content he's done on YouTube. You're giving people more of an opportunity to continue to come back to your content. You're answering their questions. I, I can't tell you how much this really, really works. This works. They, they, I, I mean, I've been doing this for, you know, when did I start the, working at the martial arts school? I became partners at the martial arts school in 2002. We started, I started blogging very early on. I started creating video content. 2003, 2004 maybe, and all I did was just answer the questions I was being asked. I've done this for over a decade, and I can tell you, it works. Every client who I recommend this to that does it, consistent with it, they get results. So I urge you to go for it and uh, let me know what happens, and talk to me. Are you going to start answering questions in your content? Are you guys doing it already and getting great results? Let me know by going to any of my social media. Now, you can go to the show notes here, which is at nuclearchowder.com slash 87. Or you can go to my social media channels, and I would love it if you tweeted at me, Facebooked at me, Pinterest at me, whatever. Wherever you want to connect, whatever your social network is, go to uh, nuclearchowder.com slash social, and you will find me. You'll find me, uh, you'll find all of my social media stuff, and uh, please connect with me. I'd love to have you connect with me. And... Make sure you go rate and review this on iTunes and Stitcher. You can get there easy going to nuclearchowder.com slash iTunes or nuclearchowder.com slash Stitcher. And I do appreciate you showing up for another episode of the Nuclear Chowder Marketing Podcast. You can go check it out on YouTube if you want to see me talking into the microphone while you're listening to me. And, uh, you know, a little behind the scenes stuff. You can kind of see how I'm producing this podcast live. And I'll talk to you on the next episode of the Nuclear Chowder Marketing Podcast. And that's it. So when you see me take a pause like that, where I suddenly realized I was ending and wrapping up the podcast, I had to reach for my iPad, which is piping in my show music. So I, I gave like a, a nice pause so that I could go back and look at when I'm editing the podcast, I can go back and I can look at where that flat lines, you know, when, when you're looking at a podcast, edit, editing it, you'll see it, you know, it's like a um, EKG, I guess, with, with uh, noise waves and then all of a sudden it flat lines and I can see that and then I can clip it and, and pin it together. So it's real seamless. I'm not going to do that here on YouTube. I'm going to leave it on YouTube as it is and see what happens. So, hey, thanks for 
watching this whole thing. This has probably been well over 30 minutes for you. Thanks for hanging in, and uh, we'll record the next one on YouTube as well, see what happens.